You may have never heard of Final Mouse, the company responsible for the creatively named Final Mouse. But despite its obscurity, the Final Mouse, that is to say the mouse, and I guess by extension the company too, has generated enough buzz that in spite of the premium price point and lack of any sort of pedigree, I not only bought into the hype and bought one before they had even announced that it was on sale, but it also managed to stay out of my pile of false hope and broken dreams. Intel brings DDR4 to the mainstream with their new Core i7-6700K and Core i5-6600K processors. Click now to learn more. So, where did the so-called hype come from? It certainly has nothing to do with the ergonomic design. The astute among you may have even noticed it's just an off-the-shelf OEM design. You can find mice like this for $10, and it's exactly the same shell. But let's take a tour of it anyway. It has a soft touch coating for the main body, a glossy plastic right side, and a textured plastic on the left. It has a thin, malleable braided cable, a left click, a right click, a scroll wheel, two thumb buttons, and one DPI button that cycles through 400, 800, 1600, and 3200 DPI. Revolutionary, right? Yeah, I know it's not, but in spite of the generic appearance, the inside guts do get more interesting. The sensor is actually the acceleration-free 3310 that can also be found in other well-regarded and more pedigreed mice, including the SteelSeries rival Rocket KPM and Zoe FK2. But there's a big difference. Final Mass offers no customizability of DPI steps, lights, button commands, or polling rate because they've designed the Final Mass to be genuinely driverless, not like Oh, you can opt to not use drivers, but you can't change lights and stuff. There's nothing you can change and no drivers you can install even if you wanted to. And even the packaging is bare with just a small slip of paper with instructions and a Final Mouse sticker. This kind of sounds like a bad thing, but it's actually not. I bought the mouse when it was first announced and I, I hated it. Well, I wanted to hate it. The build quality was terrible, the buttons were loose, the mouse feet were poorly cut and placed, and the bottom of the mouse would actually catch on my mouse pad. At $70, why would anyone care about the final mouse? Furthermore, why am I bothering to do this video? Well, in spite of its plain design and subpar build quality, it actually does perform. And you know, that's their aim. Pure performance. Final Mouse have put quite a bit of work into perfecting the sensor, controller, and firmware of this mouse. While I can't specifically reveal their secret sauce, I can say that I spoke at length with one of their engineers and they have put in a ton of work into massaging the 3310 sensor in this mouse to be the best it can possibly be for competitive gaming. They told me they put more power into the sensor, designed the circuitry to be as low latency as possible, and chose settings that their team found to be the most stable and accurate, rather than simply shooting for the, the biggest, most marketable number which is why they went with a 500 hertz polling rate instead of 1000, and why their DPI tops out at 3200. The entire team behind the mouse plays CSGO at the legendary eagle level or higher, and being SMFC myself, I feel like they're making the mouse I've been looking for. I've personally tested all the big hitters. This is the first one I have felt actually improved my game. It's just so light and responsive. So while I wanted to hate it based on the horrific build quality, my aim in CSGO has never been so good. And I can make flick shots to the face with such speed and precision that I feel guilty. It's enough to make me wonder if this mouse from this unknown company has a built-in aimbot. Despite the amazing accuracy, the build quality was so bad I had to shelve my first unit. Fortunately, they have a three-year warranty and are very responsive. The revised summer edition comes with a whole host of welcome fixes and tweaks. The new mouse feet no longer catch on my mouse pad, the back button no longer shakes, and they're looking to make even more changes going forward as a result of feedback from the community, specifically me. 
That's a lie, kind of. At 74 grams, they've crafted an incredibly light mass. The G100S and Nimbus's come close if you remove the weight inside them, but they lack thumb buttons. Compare that to the Logitech G303 at 87 grams, the Rocket KPM at around 90 grams, or the SteelSeries Rival at 128 grams. It feels less like you're moving an object and more like it's just part of your hand. The liftoff distance is 1 to 1.5 CDs, depending on your mouse pad color. And while the DPI settings seem limiting, it's all you really need for most games and more than enough for CSGO, where higher ranked players often stick to DPIs of 400 to 800. Mouse tester and in-game test confirm that there's no acceleration, and it just feels responsive. And that's really it. So in summary, the light is kind of annoyingly bright, the build quality is suspect at times, and the price seems a bit too high. But the three-year warranty is impressive, the tracking performance is amazing, second to nothing else that I've tried, and it's the lightest mouse in the category. So if you want something that simply performs, the final mouse might be your final mouse. That's so cheesy. I love it. You know what else you might not need to shop for again? A mobile carrier if you switch to Ting, because Ting is focused on customer service and customer satisfaction first. When you call their support line, you don't get sent through a, a gauntlet of robots. You speak to a real human being right from the get-go. I'm not a robot, I'm a real human being. The average Ting user only pays about $23 per month per device, and they want to prove that switching to Ting could save you money as well. If you head over to our link, linus.ting.com, you can check out their savings calculator where you can key in your usage for your last few months as well as how much you paid during those months and find out what you would have paid through Ting for the same amount of service. So if all that sounds pretty good to you, head over to our link, again, that's linus.ting.com, and when you sign up, you will get $25 in service credit or $25 towards a new device. Thanks for watching guys, if this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, and even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon. Buy a cool t-shirt, not like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through the community forum. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out the moving vlog where we all move stuff.